Represent your representations in the symbolic code of language, humanity, humanity, and run your hand along a restless spine. It was a time of fossil fuel priorities, of precious business time. That's what they'll say about us centuries hence. It was a busy get on with it business time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. So can you talk about the founding of the Poetry Project? When I was coming here, I think the theater genesis was already happening. Yeah. There were films being shown in the sanctuary by Andy Warhol and others in the community. This space had always been available and continued to be available. And um, that took, started to kick in. And I always link it to the death of Frank O'Hara. Yeah because he was such an important uh, thread between how poetry could extend more into other aspects of the cultural life in New York. The artistic and poetic scenes that passed through here in the early years, downtown poetry or second generation of the New York school, right. but it's also Umbra um, yes, and Black exactly. Arts. And we had the um, Black Panthers yep. breakfast program. We had the Young Lords. Mm -hmm. We had The Kitchen, which also had the Motherfuckers and the Black Panthers. People could come in with their, their uh, causes and their energy and what, you know, the ideas they had. It was felt so essential just to have this kind of space, this sanctuary that was non-institutional, you know, institutional, non-academic, a place to go and be kind of heard. Whenever I'm with a gathering of younger Poets, I say, look around the room. Who are these people? Who are you going to be connected to? Who are your readers going to be? Who are you going to start a little magazine with? Who mm -hmm. are you so in a way, this was a kind of incubator for incredible things that went on. There's a sense in which people just understand that, like your peers, have a lot of room for understanding what your thing is. Mm -hmm. So you're not actually fighting with someone else for that. For that, mm -hmm. It's just, you, you were all doing this kind yeah, of extraordinary yeah. thing together. Some women love to wait for light, for a rain in the June night, for a touch of the sun to heal them. If you were a poet at any level, you could right. come to the project. Right. You did not have to be an expert. You didn't right. have to know anybody. Right. And I think that some people are like, oh, you know, I, can I come? And the answer is yes. I mean, it really, like the kind of all poets welcome, all like people welcome is exactly. such an important part of the ethos here. You can be a genuine freak um, or just genuinely curious. Right. I mean, I think the other part of the longevity is the New Year's Day Marathon. You know, people yes. who only come to the project once a year I know. will come on New Year's Day and they'll come hungover or high and they'll listen to extraordinarily famous people and people they've never heard of right. give really exceptional performances and the church is packed. You know, yeah. it's a ritual. It's like the best thing to do in New York um, on the first day of the year. Well, I started it. Yes, yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I love putting things together, and I love getting everybody engaged. Again, uh -huh. what you're saying, it wasn't how famous you were or how whatever, beginners, which was already the ethos. And on the other side of it, too, is like, you know, now the staff, we really think about um, who are the people and who could the people be who think of themselves as having a stake in the poetry project, who mm -hmm. thinks of this as like mm -hmm. somehow their home right. or a place where they can come because they know that something is happening here. Right. And one thing that makes me feel 
connected to the history of this place is that that's a lot of different constituencies and communities exactly. who feel like they have yep. a real stake in, right. the, in the project and real stake at St. Mark's. Right. What's your earliest memory of uh, St. Mark's? I remember it. There were pews up there, pews oh, wow, all yeah. along here, the red rug. There was the jazz concerts in the summer. And Sam Shepard was, his first works were being done here. We would always go listen to Nina Simone. Wow. It was amazing. You know, I think what was coalescing for me too is, again, this sense of these things, these different mediums coming together. I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about the overlap between the visual art and poetry communities in the first few years of the project. Yes, the visual artists were um, so generous with the, you know, the covers for the magazines that included Warhol and other, you know, known figures of the time, John Cage, world covers with Joe Brainerd, Philip Guston. I remember when Guston said, please, may this take care of your life, may it help the poetry mm. project. So that support coming from the art world helped. And then there would be some auctions and that sort of thing, then that's continued. You were in discourse around your work, around the response to the work, around looking at the work, studying the work, going to museums together. And I'm so grateful for the way that they came to the events. And, and listened. And listened. The pizza shop had a bottle labeled everything, so delightedly I shook it on my pizza and jumped into a cab. I'm old school New Yorker. I told Adam I liked the inexactness of cabs, the cash, the entire analog experience of them. The details of the Joe and Charlie visit is fading. A lot of the poets who are still in the neighborhood are still very yep. centered here. Uh -huh. I think it's, I see a lot of people who are, uh, you know, from my generation who come back yep. here. Um, there's so many events, for example, when a poet has died, there can be people from their whole lifespan mm -hmm. coming here. You honor the people who you've loved and adored, have been part of it, and just this sense of keeping the work alive, keeping the, the you know, vocalizing the the poems themselves yeah. coming in memoriam. I mean, it's intense. Sounds echo in that, in the sanctuary, sanctuary. For, 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 for minutes, and they also echo for decades. decades. Yeah. And that is, I think, one of the really powerful experiences yeah. of, of working here, of reading here, of being a part of this space. You feel it when you get up on stage at the marathon, when 150 people have been on stage before you. And then you think that you know what it's gonna be like, and then you actually get on stage and you face the audience, and it's actually like, you're confronted by, again, the kind of the echo of mm -hmm. every word that everyone has said in, that, in, that, in the church that day, and for 50 years before. During the day, he was like everyone else. He drank coffee for breakfast, and at dinner time, he drank mineral water or wine at the table. What was he after? What was he looking for? A sign, an answer? Sometimes falling into a hole within a hole, or many holes within holes, getting out of them one after the other, then falling again, saying, this is not your grave, get out of this hole. I want to bask my form in agency, a cosmos never hoped to matter, but warm, like a breeze, not chill, lonely day and dawn of canvas canticles, wanting tears for the time pouring down all night.